So I received a few questions about the Roman oil lamps, and as I've promised in my videos, I wanted to make sure I answered them. Before I do, I want to reiterate that if you have any questions, suggestions for video topics, or want me to explore any topics in more detail, just comment below and I'll happily do so. And as a few people told me they were fans of my Roman jokes, I'll tell another at the end of this video, as well as some interesting Roman fun facts about food. With that, welcome to Curious People Wanted. I'm Dr. Darren Raymond Locke, curator at the Barnum Museum. Keeping with trends, if you asked me how often I think about the Roman Empire, the answer is probably more than I should, and certainly more than Taylor Swift does. But I received a few questions regarding what oil was used in Roman oil lamps and how they were lit. I also had a question specifically about this lamp and whether the palm branch decoration around the shoulders could be indicative of the use of palm oil as a lighting agent. I'm going to take these questions in reverse order. So the palm branch decoration is not suggestive in any way of the oil used to light this particular lamp. This lamp is from the 5th or 6th century AD, a time when early Christianity was still continuing to spread throughout the Roman world. The palm decoration is an early Christian symbol and a popular one at that. Ancient sources say it was a victory symbol associated with Jesus' triumphal entrance into Jerusalem and the palms thrown before him as he entered the city. Today, Christians still acknowledge and celebrate this event as Palm Sunday. Now for the more general questions of lamps, oil, and all the culture in the Roman world. To light the oil lamps, a wick would have been inserted into the well. Wicks were made from linen, papyrus, oakum, or mullein. In terms of the oil used, the Romans used a bunch of different types for fuel. Castor oil, sesame oil, walnut oil, grape oil, among various others, as well as beeswax and animal fats. However, the most popular oil throughout the Roman world was olive oil. Olive oil was used for literally everything. It was used for cooking, much like we use it today. It was used for fuel, for lighting devices, as a lubricant, an insect repellent, and even had medicinal applications. Byproducts from olive oil production were used as agricultural fertilizers and as a means to waterproof amphora, which were jars used for storage and shipping. Olive oil was so important in the Roman world, it is estimated that the average Roman used approximately five to six gallons of oil a year. The 25 Roman legions are estimated to have consumed up to 34,250 amphorae of olive oil a year. To put that into context, some shipping amphora could hold almost 22 gallons. So we are talking 753,500 gallons of olive oil just for the army alone. And if you calculate that, each gallon weighs about 7.6 pounds, that amounts to a staggering weight of 5,726,600 pounds of olive oil. A military tugboat, to put this in context, weighs about 7 million pounds and a small bridge weighs 3.5 million pounds. If that doesn't help you contextualize this, then in gallons, it's about one and a half Olympic sized swimming pools, just for the army. That's a lot of oil. It was such a big commodity that some provinces paid their taxes in olive oil. Disclaimer about that, do not attempt to pay your taxes in olive oil today. It would result in really bad things happening. However, for the average person in the Roman world, olive oil was used for lighting and cooking. It was used in Roman bathhouses though too. When a person would go to a bathhouse, they would be rubbed with oil before moving through the different rooms. They would start with the apoditarium, which is an entrance, then move to the tepidarium, the warm room, the caldarium, the hot room, and then the frigidarium, which is the cold room. Depending on the bathhouse, whether it was a large structure with special rooms and a gymnasium or a smaller, simpler private building, there might be a separate room for oiling oneself called an unctuarium, which was either found in the tepidarium or off a palestra, which is a Greek term referring to an open area for wrestling. In the unctuarium, the oil would be scraped off the body using a strigil, which is an instrument that has a concave curved blade. So did any of the oil actually go to waste? Absolutely not. 
If oil went rancid or was deemed old, it was simply used for lighting and burning. Oil that has gone rancid has lost water, so it would burn, in theory, brighter and potentially cleaner. All right, Roman fun facts for you. Do you ever drink coffee or maybe order some and it comes with a biscotti? Yeah, I think most people simply think those are an Italian cookie, but biscotti were actually invented by the Roman army. These were cooked, dried, and preserved foods that really didn't go stale easily, which made them good travel foods. Another fun Roman fact is that asparagus was considered a delicacy. So much so that Romans kept stores of this stuff frozen in the Alps and brought it down to defrost for special occasions. But not all Roman foods are things that we might seek today. Their toothpaste was powdered mouse brains and they were particularly fond of a sauce called garum, which was black and made from fermented fish. I don't know about you, but I'm not about to switch out my Hellman's mayo. Right, so now the moment I know you all have been waiting for, Roman jokes. These are the last ones that I can tell because most are not family friendly or are not safe for work. And technically, this is sort of my job. All right, first one. A philosopher who had gotten sick promised to pay the doctor if he recovered. When his wife nagged him for drinking wine while he had a fever, he said, do you want me to get healthy and be forced to pay the doctor? And if that one didn't land, a philosopher checked on a friend who was very, very ill. When the man's wife said that he had departed, the philosopher replied, when he arrives back, will you tell him that I stopped by? <laughs> Again, I'm going to assume that you're having a good laugh at home. Either way, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. And again, if there are any questions you have or topics you'd like me to explore or explore in more depth, please comment below or email me. But as always, remember to stay curious.